Welcome to Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All Stars Podcast Network, presented by Extreme Threads. Your home for the latest news from the National Lacrosse League and Indoor Lacrosse. Now, let's talk some lacrosse with your hosts, Jake Elliott and Evan Schemenauer. You heard the man, lacrosse fans. It's time for Lax Class. Settle down, take your seats, pay attention. Eyes up front! Lacrosse Classified is in session. It's Jake Elliott, Evan Schemenauer, back with you. Episode 20, number 9. 29 episodes into Lacrosse Classified here. Thanks for joining us once again on a Tuesday on the Lacrosse All-Stars Podcast Network. Evan, let's get you in right off the top. Um, What a game we saw on Saturday. As far as a showcase for the National Lacrosse League goes, I don't know if you could put a better game on display than what we saw in Game 2 from the Saddle Dome. No, I'll I'll put it this way. Best league final ever. No, it didn't go to Game 3, but that that one was. Hang on a second. You're going to tell me. Hang on. Hang on. You're going to tell me that that game was better than 2016 Cornwall scoring with 10 seconds left to win it? Yeah, I am. Because the thing is, in in the, in that game, you had that one bit of excitement right at the end that Sastel Center blew up, right? And you actually had in Edmonton a year earlier where um, Marty Dinsdale popped one with a minute to go to win it. But the difference in this game was that it was had over. Dolby. Then you had Corey Small. <laughs> it's like, okay, now we're going to keep going. Dane Kobe hits the post. You know, Buffalo should have won it with any one of their three shots in the first possession. And then Reeves Dutch on a second possession after Curtis Dixon hit the post. I mean, it was, it was not one heart attack like the Cornwall goal. And I know Toronto Rock fans are going to complain because of their championships in the past. Were Caleb Toe. Caleb Toe. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, this one had so many heart attacks. I thought Teddy Jenner was going to hyperventilate by the end. Well, his his <laughs> overtime goal with his buddy Dutchie there, uh, a couple of Shamrock boys, his mic couldn't couldn't hold his call. Like, he, he, <laughs> he overcapacitated his microphone on the overtime goal. How about Reese Dutch, Evan? The guy never, and I mean ever, shoots short side, and he pulls the string on Vino for the overtime winner. How good do you think that felt for Reese Dutch? The where being cut from Vancouver to going to Calgary to scoring the overtime winner to win the championship. What a story for Reese Dutch this year. No, I couldn't be happier for him. That's and that's the truth. <laughs> like it's, you know, and like you said, he got cut from Vancouver, literally tossed aside. Here you go, and Kurt Malowski picks up the phone within hours. Gets the uh, in. Let's put it this way: he's the second biggest acquisition of the off season after Matt Vince. And you know, yeah, sure enough, he he, he goes short side. And to be frankly honest, Vince is cheating far post thinking that's where he's going because you, you school these guys. But yeah, what can you say <laughs> about it? He, he gets his opportunity and he shines in it. Absolutely. Um, and, and all kidding aside, I thought uh, I thought Ashley and Kayla and, and Teddy and the Chancellor, my man Brad Challoner, I thought uh, they all did a fantastic job calling that uh, that game too. And and what a game it was uh, to have an opportunity to, to call a game like that, an overtime winner to, to win a championship. Uh, that doesn't come around every day as a broadcaster. So I thought those guys did a fantastic job. Uh, another guy that did a fantastic job in that game, was Christian Del Bianco, and and he wasn't named the MVP of that game. Could have easily been named the MVP of that game. Uh, Dane Doby ended up being the MVP, and and you can't really argue that either. Dan Doby. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I I, I just I, people make mistakes, and and that's all I'm going to say about that. But. Uh, 
what what a what a playoff for Christian Del Bianco, who goes you know from winning a Minto Cup in in September of of 2018 to winning a National Lacrosse League championship in May of 2019. Uh, but he was just spectacular through the, like he kept getting better and better and better, and and he said he wasn't at his best in game two, but his his not best was good enough. You know, and I, I would have picked him as MVP, and it almost seemed like in the emotional state that Dane Doby was uh, when he was accepting the award, he was almost, because he said, Christian, this is for you, right? And um, just to see how important he was. And no, he didn't have his greatest game, but still, what was he? He was nine, 831 save percentage in the playoffs. It's just absolutely insane. And the two... Stop. Well, there were three stops. One of them wasn't his, but to stop Sean Evans at the top of the crease unmarked when he went five hole and Christian had him red. That's just how special he is. Yeah, I mean, just incredible. And then Courier somehow blocks a shot and just uh, the the drama. If you haven't uh, seen the finish in that one, folks, shame on you. You should go back and watch it. It was one for the ages and and pretty emotional stuff to watch Dan McRae the captain of the Roughnecks who got the trophy from the commissioner. And, you know, you think, you always think, who's the first guy that's going to get it? Who's the first guy that's going to get it? Uh, it wasn't a player. It was Slip. It was Bobby McMahon that they decided that the trophy was going to go to first. And you could just see how much that meant to him in his eyes. No, absolutely. And there were a lot of guys here that had put in a long time in Calgary that finally got their championship. So, uh, a lot of emotion going on, um, but you know, just what a what a finish to what was an amazing game. To be honest with you, and you know, we we didn't expect this scoreline. I don't think anybody did after game one. Uh, but if you thought that, if you would have told me Matt Vince was going to allow nine goals in the opening half, I wouldn't have thought he allowed nine all game. That's just how bonkers this game was. Yeah, I, I mean, but. On the other hand, it was kind of like your prototypical National Lacrosse League game with that amount of goals scored and the amount of talent that both those teams have offensively. You just wonder how long could those goalies keep it up for. Um, and, and it's not like either one of them played poorly, but sometimes a good offense will beat a good defense, and I think that was the case. Like Guys just had it going that night. You look at a guy like Riley Lowen, who who had a monster game, and... I mean, that really helped a team like Calgary get over the top. They needed production from a lot of different sources, and, and they got it in that game, too. Yeah, and, you know, even on Buffalo's side, Jordan Burson, who had right. no stats at all. I mean, all he almost single-handedly hat-trick. got that done uh, there in the fourth quarter with the, you know, with the hat trick. Chase Frazier had a hat trick, but it's, it's a couple, and you know, the power plays were, what, 9 for 10? In this game, just mm. the pass that Christian Del Bianco made oh. to Dane Doby <laughs> with a minute to go. Yeah. Let's put it this way: if it was anybody other than maybe Christian Del Bianco, and I, I can't like maybe Nick Rose or something like that, where that one coaches would kill you for in that's, most cases. Because that take, I mean, that's he, the kind of thing, though, Evan. Like the kid has just got ice water in his veins. And he'll throw that pass a hundred times out of a hundred. He doesn't care. Like he is going to do it because he knows he can do it. And I mean, Dan Doby still got to catch the thing and finish the thing. But I mean, like it was, it was like a, it was like a, a streaking uh, wide receiver in football that just throws up the perfect spiral and, and the guy runs underneath it for an 80 yard touchdown. Like it, it was just like yeah, a, a I mean, moment in time where you're like, oh, my God, he just threw that ball in a tie game with a minute to go, and, and, and then Dane catches it, and then the long review. It had it all. It had, This game really had it all as far as drama went. Yeah, and I mean, the reason I say that is he, he's throwing a 150-foot pass, and he's got about a six-foot window at best to throw it into because yeah. Ethan O'Connor's back, and he is – I think it was Ethan O'Connor. I can't remember who it was, but – it, it, the guy's back there, like he's covered, and you know, 
even when Doby catches it, he sees Drake. Yeah, and then his and toe is like out. literally inches off the turf when the ball goes in. Like I think if they would have called that goal off, they wouldn't have had enough to overturn it mm-hmm. to call it a goal. It was that, it was that close. Uh, but yeah, but you, you got to think about it this way: that if Christian is t- three feet short on that pass, yeah, it's Buffalo turnover. intercepts it. And you got a tired Calgary D trying to stop what would be a game winning goal for yeah. Buffalo. Well, there was... He throws it three feet long. Mad Vince has got it. Buffalo's got another chance. So, like, I mean, it, it's one of those plays I'll probably remember for a lot of years. Yeah, and, and there were so many kind of games within the games, right? Like, you think about that Zach Courier loose ball where he gets hit from behind and manages to stay out of the crease and get the pass off to Bell, who manages to get the timeout call like it there were so many plays within that game that were just so huge and crucial and you wonder how these guys maintain their focus and composure with pressure like that and and that's what makes these guys pro yeah the talents there and the physical attributes are there but what makes guys professionals and and championship players is the ability to do it under pressure and make it look easy. And, uh, you know, for another guy like Jesse King, who who has a championship but wasn't a part of it, uh, undefeated Jesse King in 2019, the Roughnecks <laughs> 7-0. and uh, Mind you, his, his Shamrocks have lost a couple games, but Jesse hasn't played in those, so I don't think those count. But uh, what a, what an X-factor Jesse King turned out to be, and, and, and he can – you know, wear this ring proudly, and not that he wouldn't wear the other one proudly, but he can wear this one proudly, knowing that he was a huge part of things. Yeah, five assists, five assists in the game, and like I said before, he just makes Dane Doby that much more open. And that you know, Doby had four goals in the game, and I, I you know, I'm probably going to rib him a few more times on Twitter. He seems to like it that <laughs> we keep no, uh, stating the fact that he's still undefeated. Right. Because the streak continues. Yeah, the natural. The natural. Um, speaking of a natural, we got uh, a natural head coach uh, coming up on the other side. This man was born to coach lacrosse. He was an unbelievable player, Evan. He's an even better coach, and now he's got an NLL championship as a head coach. It is my good friend, Kurt Mouse Malowski, coming up on the other side here on Extreme Threads Lacrosse Classified. Keep it right here on Lacrosse All-Stars Podcast Network. Pure Vita Labs is proud to bring you the highest quality sports supplements on the market. PVL products are 100% all natural with no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. And the entire line is also Informed Choice certified. We designed all our products with the athlete in mind. We look forward to being a part of your athletic achievements, helping you push the bar higher, win at the highest levels, and set personal records for years to come. Hi, this is Dan Dawson from the San Diego Seal. You're listening to Lacrosse Classified on Lax All Stars. Welcome back to Extreme Threads Lacrosse Classified here on the Lax All Stars Podcast Network. It's Jake Elliott, it's Evan Sheminar with you. As always, a big thanks to our friends at Pure Vita Labs. PVL.com. You're going to see them if you're out and about in the rinks uh, around Summer Ball here in BC. They sponsor a bunch of teams. they got water bottles. Uh, I just switched back to my PVL lanyard. Informed choice. Everything is natural, nothing artificial, and all the best lacrosse players on the planet using PVL supplements. Uh, got some new information. I'm going to check this stuff out uh, a little later on, but they got some plant-based stuff. I uh, saw some boys making some pancakes the other day. Look pretty good. Uh, speaking of pretty good, you got to be in a pretty good mood as we welcome the NLL champion head coach of the Calgary Roughnecks, one, Kurt Malowski. Uh, Kurt, my friend, uh, first off, congratulations. And, and second of all, thanks for doing this. Thanks a lot, Jake. I, uh, like I said, always, man, I appreciate being on your show. You do a great job. And uh, thanks for thinking of me after the weekend here. Well, you were uh, first and foremost uh, that came to the top of my mind. And uh, you've been you've been slugging away at this thing. I know you got one as a player, Kurt, but uh, do you got two as a player? I should probably should, should check that. I know you got one. I got one in 09 with Calgary, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then you've been slugging away at this coaching thing for a while, and, and you've come close. Um, I want to ask you, when you saw 
Saskatchewan get knocked out by Colorado and what has kind of been big brother here for the last few years did you kind of think to yourself this is it this is our year or did you think you know what we beat those guys twice in the regular season I don't really care that they're not in we're playing good lacrosse right now and and we're going to take care of business um a bit of both you know like uh, you looked at it you know we, we beat them we beat them up there and we handled them pretty good the last game of the year at, at our place so we definitely had the confidence we it wasn't like you had to slay the, the dragon there but um you know it, that being said you would have to go up there and win in there and that's a tough building so there's a bit of combination a bit of both like we weren't afraid of them but it, it would have been it would have been tougher in their building to go in and beat them in that playoff atmosphere but so you know things happen for a reason and you know we were a confident group no matter where we played and things worked out a crazy, crazy end of game two of this game. You have a, a long pass, an unbelievable pass by Christian Del Bianco to get you guys the lead. Corey Small ties it up. A hit post. A couple saves by Del Bianco, one even by uh, Courier. And then you manage to get it the winner. Take us through your mindset in the last minute of regulation and how this all transpired uh, from your end on the bench. It, you, you almost think you got it. You got you went it a couple times at the end, and you know you, you're looking at the Dobie thing, and it's you know big goal for us, and, and you know they're looking to call a timeout off the draw. So I'm processing on the hoop person how we want out there, how we're going to play it, uh, what we want to do, and then they end up getting the ball off of it. So we got six on five D, and you know it's, it didn't look like a great play, kind of broken. And, you know, Kluche falls down in the middle, and then they rotate up off the crease and they stick one far side, and it's like oh really, and, and, and it's just like you know what for that brief second you're thinking oh man. And then it's like right away, what's next? And that's been our match all the time. And, you know, then we get a chance to control the clock. We still had our timeout in our pocket. We get a chance to control the clock. And if you watch the tape, they'll, they'll, you know, they run the – we knew they were, they were going to probably lock off Dobes, and, and they locked and released, but we were still ready for it. And Dobes came around the top, and he threw a twister and bounced off the post. It's like, oh, unlucky there. And then in, like, the procedure call, to be honest with you, in overtime to put the ball in their stick – and uh, so, again, we just kind of, kind of, we've always had that resiliency and that what next attitude. And our guys don't get, you know, in years past, the, the hair on fire. And some of that's got to be on me, man. I get pretty excited at times, and I don't think it helps our guys. So we really, as a coaching staff and as a leadership group and, and as a group in general, just wanted to make sure we were calm in all situations and just let things play out. Having that success down the stretch by being calm um, seems to really help us in those, those tough situations. And then, you know, they get to look at the net. And we, we really did make a conscious effort of wanting to run. When Buffalo made a push there in the third quarter, when they stuck a couple goals, I thought we sat on our heels. And the decision was made to start pushing the ball a little bit more and just kind of shut back and get that momentum back and regain our ground. So we wanted to run. It was being said that we wanted to secure the ball before we run. And they ended up with a four on two because we, we just ran. It would have been great if we went and went the other way with it, but we didn't. And uh, great save by Delves. The courier got, got in front of that one. And then we... Uh, they're able to run a set piece for Dix, and uh, he cracked one off the bar and ball bounced back out to Jesse. Great fuller bounce on his part, you know, being the responsible guy that he is. And he started at one of our set plays, and then we just kind of swung it over to the right. And, and I, I, Dix cut the middle, and we've been preaching to him just so much about, like, he could draw so much attention just by a subtle cut to the middle, and this new stayed with him just a little bit too long. And that's just smart, rotated up off the crease. And, he got the ball, and he had told me after the game he'd been sat him up far side. I know Dutchie likes to shoot far side, and he scored one there. And you know, we had a pretty good shooting plan against against Vino. We watched every single goal. We he you know was shot against him all season long, and you get a real trend when you see that. And uh, Dutchie made it one heck of a shot. You know, he's a big game player for a reason, and uh, doesn't surprise me he was the one to get the winner. So pretty <laughs> exciting, pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I'm just chuckling here, Kurt. Like you just rattled off like the last four minutes in overtime in that game <laughs> play for play player for player but bounce for bounce like that's just incredible to me that you can recall that kind of detailed information off the top of your head like that that's just <laughs> bonkers to me that you can walk through that in your head like that and, I, and honestly Kurt that's that's probably what makes you the coach that you are, but uh, the the other two guys on your bench there, and, and I'm sure you want to mention them a little bit, and I, and I, and to watch uh, Danny Mac hand off the trophy to slip first uh, was a pretty emotional scene to watch. Uh, but just talk about the job that Bobby McMahon and, and Robbie Williams did for you all season. Well, I'll, I'll start with Robbie. Um, you know, I had the chance to play with Robbie, and you know, he's in back in junior. He's been a good good friend of mine for years and years, and 
you know, he, he, he battles in, 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 uh, in the WLA, does a great job there. And, you know, a couple of years ago we talked about we had a coaching change and we had an opportunity to bring a guy on. And I can honestly say I haven't seen a guy, and I'm always getting tears when I talk about this because I care about him so much. And, and he works so, so hard on the video and on his preparation. He just wants to do it so, so well. And we all know how hard he worked as a player and how committed he was to his team. It's no different on the bench. He just he, he he's got a great balance with his family, but it was always lacrosse to make sure he was ready for the Saturday night games and the Friday night practices. And you know that's just what made him so successful. And it was it's just so proud to see a guy like that be able to get his first championship. You know, knowing how knowing what he puts in, and I'm all honest, an honest effort, honest result guy, and he he, he exemplifies that. And and you know, I'm so proud for him. And then you look at you look to my right at you know. We got Bobby McMahon, and he had he he'd been to a few championships and never won one. And he's taught me so much in life with my kids, my family, and he's got the respect of the room, and he he articulates things better than anyone that I've ever met. And he's he's the, the best devil's advocate at times, and he's your, he's your best ally at, at others. And he knows the, the game inside and out. He's been through it all. He's won it, won those championships when he was a player and he's been around so many good people and there's so much to learn from Bob and he just cares so much and he's so selfless and it, it's so real both those guys are so selfless and it's so real and you know for the guys to have the opportunity they had that planned out and we talked about Bob McMahon in 2014 how he had won and we all made a conscious effort we knew where that trophy was going and the guys the guys you know that was their plan they stepped up for Bobby because Bobby had been there for them time in and time out and He's been the battles and talk about two loyal guys on either side. Man, I, I couldn't surround myself with two better people, and I'm glad that they won. It was so special. So, and looking back when we had uh, you on the program earlier this year, and the one thing you said there was the one player on your roster you don't worry about is Christian Del Bianco. And this is a guy that he's, he's just 21. He's a kid. He just won a Minto Cup. He's, I think he's the only goaltender who's won a Minto and an NL championship back-to-back. Uh, you know, he. You think he going into the final? Is he going to be flustered? Is he going to be pressured? And then he pulls off one of the best goaltending performances in years. Talk to us of just how good this kid is. So obviously, having a championship at 21 speaks for itself, and the mental cups he's got speaks for themselves. And we've I talked about his mental fortitude for years. I I use the parallel where I watched him get railroaded into the net. Well, the guy scores, ref up, makes a bad call. And, should have been a disallowed goal. He just gets the ball and then hands it to the ref. And that was something I noticed from day one, how special it is for him to have that that, that ability to disconnect after a bad goal or a bad call. Or, and that goes hand in hand with pressure. He doesn't feel pressure. He just, he honestly, you could say, you know, face the next shot, what's next mentality. But he exemplifies that everyone wants to be like that, but you can't do it. You just can't. There's goalies that cannot do that when the ball, when the game is on the line. This kid can't. It, it, it take his years out of it. It doesn't matter. It's like he's in that moment and he focuses and the other guy makes a big save and that you would think the pressure would lump back on him. That nah, no matter. He's just going to make the next one. And I know he made the comment that he didn't think he had his best in that final game. And you know what? I don't, we don't talk about numbers, Christian and I, we don't. And, and he just plays his game and I let him do his thing. And we have such a mutual trust and admiration for each other. We kind of know the way each other's thinks now over the years as we've involved, but when the game is on the line, no matter what he's done prior to that, I know he's going to make the save. I know he's going to he's going to outduel that guy at the other end. He's going to, and uh, that and I think every single guy on our team knows that, and everybody can stop clutching their sticks or relaxing on their assignments. And, you know, you look at the end of that game, bang, bang, bang. The momentum should have went to Buffalo, and in theory, it, it should have got the winning goal. But what does he do? He stops the, the, the previous MVP of the league point blank inside the dot twenty four foot. Unreal. And that's not by accident. That's just, no. that's Christian Del Bianco. Yeah. 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 And, and I mean, we've been a little bit spoiled, Kurt, because we've grown up in the same town and, and watched this kid from from just a little youngster to to what he's developed into now. And, and you know, with that being said, you mentioned Rob Williams and, and you guys being together since junior. And we're both Coquitlam guys, Kurt, and both pretty uh, Coquitlam proud guys, I would say. Uh, and a lot of Coquitlam connections on that Calgary team. Just, 
you know the the relationship uh, and what it means to play lacrosse in Coquitlam, and then to have those guys under you there in Calgary and go on and win an NLL championship. What does that mean to you? You know, Jake. You, you know that I I'm a huge Adnack guy, and you know, one with the seniors and one with the juniors, and you know, my kids play in the Ridge, and I support them 100. percent But I I believe the, the purple and gold. There's no question. Everybody knows knows that, and you know, Riley Lowen and I got the you know. We shared a moment. We talked about the 210 championship we won together, and you know, we got a chance to do that. And there's, you know, you got Delbs there that's you know, a huge ad knack, and, you know, Delbs played for the seniors with me. And there's, there's a huge tie there, and it's it's special. It's two, I feel, two great organizations in junior and senior with the ad knack tradition and then that with the Calgary Roughnecks. So just to have friends and, and to be able to friends and kids you played with and guys you coached in the past come full circle and you know, win it at the, the highest level. It's a, it, The Man Cup is a tough trophy. It's a war of attrition. They're going to beat the crap out of you, but you can put some money down and get a real good team. And I'm not discrediting any of that, the WLA, because that's where my bread was buttered, and I love the WLA. But with the period in the NLL, you can't do that. You, you can't just go grab a team and put all the superstars together and, and go out and, and know you're going to be in the final in September. Like, you can, can't. You have to have the, the league has got this so tight. you got salary caps. you got all the rules in place where you have to be able to be, to be fair. So to win, win it at the pinnacle of the lacrosse, nation is so it's so special it's and it's so hard to win man i've toiled in it for years and there's so many good players and coaches that have never had had an opportunity to, to be even in the final let alone win it so very humbled very blessed very thankful of the organization very thankful for all the players all the years that battled and competed and left it all on the floor and i can't see how proud i am of the group of guys and our, our our staff and everybody in calgary that was involved and the guys that never got the chance to win it but yet left their mark in the organization and pushed us to get it done. Can't be more proud of all the guys that, that were involved and the guys that won that. Yeah, I want to ask you, Kurt, do you think, you know, with everything, you, you've talked a lot about other people, and, and rightly so, but I want, you to, I want you to talk about yourself here for a second because what, what Calgary did this year, especially with, you know, making the trade for Jesse King and then him going down in training camp was, was a massive, massive loss. And I don't know if people really understood how big of a loss that was. But then you add to the fact, you know, you have no Curtis Manning to start the year. You don't have Curtis Dixon to start the year. You go the entire year without Wesley Berg. You bring in new bodies and Reese Dutch. And it, it just, do you think where I'm going with this, Kurt, is do you think this might have been your finest job coaching in a season? It was challenging, Jake. It was very challenging early in the year. Like we were, you know, we were, we got out of the gate quick, but it was like, eh, you know, Delves would have great nights, Doves would have great nights. The next, the, whoever we had, like there, Bush would step up Chris Bush early for us. So, everybody had a little bit of part of just to get to where we got to go to, but it was, it was tough. Like you look down, you're dressing seven guys a night and you're, you're missing three of them. And it's like, you're, you know, it's, it's, and you need to, anybody that's been around the NLL for a long time needs to know you need your best going every night to be successful in that league. And, but what, but what it did, Jake is, is it did bring out the best in us coaches and it brought out the best in our players. It brought out the best that they got into situations that they, that he might not have been getting into if we we're full, we'll have a full lineup. And I think when you go look at it all said and done, it really made a difference down the stretch. Our young guys, we, we made a mandate to play them, and then they were forced to play, and they had to play those minutes, and other guys had to play more minutes up front. And, you know, Taylor and Lowen had big minutes up there, and, you know, Pacer got in there, and he got big minutes up there, and he had the ball in his stick. And then, you know, you bring in Reese Dutch as possibly a complimentary guy, but no, he's not. Him and Dix get that, that, that uh, continuity together because they had to play every single night with big minutes. So, you know, I'd like to say, yeah, it was tough for us. It was. I won't lie to you. I can never do, man. It was tough as us as coaching staff and just to battle through all that adversity. But at the end of the day, it made us better. It made us better coaches. It made our team better. And then when it came down to when we needed every at their best, it was the lessons of the series, of the season that made the difference. We didn't scoreboard watch. We didn't standings watch. We didn't deviate from the plan. Sometimes we have a choice, but it made a difference in the end. And that's why I'm so proud of it. But yeah, Jake, it was special. I'd be lying if I if I wasn't proud of what happened on the bench and what happened with our group. I'm smiling today, man, and I can't stop <laughs> choking up, man. It was pretty awesome, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, I pretty mean, awesome. you can you can hear it in your voice, Kurt. You can hear it. Of course, we hear the accolades of Dixon, Doby, Delbianco, King, Dutch. Who are those one or two guys on the team that 
really stepped it up, really contributed to the team that we don't necessarily hear about game after game. That's hard for me to, to, to really pinpoint one guy, but there, there's, I, I know the show's not long enough. I go through my whole roster how much I love those guys. But, <laughs> you know, just just a guy like Greg Harnett, you know, like he gets railroaded by Noble and everyone's saying that, you know, Noble this, Noble that, and, you know, he gets pigeonholed in the wrong way and he gets made an example by the league. And I thought that wasn't right. You know, and then they get questioned about you pass up on Cornwall and you take Greg Harnett. Man, what a warrior. Like, what a guy. Just soaking shots, picks that ball up, beats pace for the other way in the championship. Doesn't say nothing. Just goes about his business. Anybody wants to shake champions and fight, he's, he'll fight them. He ain't going to win. He know he ain't going to win, but he's going to fight them. And just to have, like, how can you preach mentor, uh, you know, warrior mentality? You know you got dopes. You know you got dicks. You know you got dubs. The guys are just going to do it. But a guy like Greg Harnett that just is is just willing to do whatever it takes and I'd be remiss, like I got Bertie and I got a, you know I got a Mano and all those other guys, but there's a guy that that you mentioned the other day about Mike Carnegie and the captaincy. Like he took he took a big step back and go a couple three steps further. He took a step back for being in the lineup and and playing to being like an extra coach for us. He didn't drop his lip. He didn't drag his lip. He showed so much character throughout the whole process and even where he finished today on the roster and being a part of it, that is special. That is why the team wins because everybody bought in to a different dynamic. And just that he didn't even step on the floor, man, but he was such a big part of it. Yeah. You tie all those guys in and the show's not long enough, guys. I wish I could go on and every single guy, but to answer your question, Greg Hernan, I thought Mikey Carnegie just the selflessness to be a part of it. Yeah, watching Great. watching watching Cards celebrate after after the championship, you you love to see something like that because that that's not an easy thing to have a letter taken off your jersey and then be the kind of teammate that that he was all season. As far as Greg Harnett goes, Kurt, I mean, uh, a lot of people don't like playing against that guy, and that's the kind of guy you want on your team. So everybody would take a Greg Harnett on their back end in a heartbeat. Uh, I got one more here for you, Coach, and and watching your your feature uh, at halftime with with Devin uh, between you and Dane really. I mean, it, it it got me emotional, man. And 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 for people that like don't know, you and Dane have been together since I want to say like nineteen or what? What is it? You tell me once I'm done here. But since junior, and then and then you're together in senior, and then you're together your entire pro career. Like you guys are joined at the hip, and and to watch what Dane did this season you, with everything that we mentioned, with guys missing and all the rest of it, being uh, 11 years into his career was just insane to watch, and, and I know you couldn't be happier for one particular guy than you are for Dane Doby, what he's gone uh, gone through in his life away from the field and, and on it. Um, just give me some words on Dane and, and what that championship means to not only you, but you and him together. I, I don't I don't have the words really to put in exactly to, to really articulate it, but he you nailed it in that little you know segue in. It, he's just he's just that guy that just cares so much about his teammates and just just to see him evolve to be in a throw in like Jamie Lincoln's dad said, like Dane Doby, you know I got a guy up in our lore that might might be okay, and I was like okay, and we brought him out there and. I, you know, the rest was history. Just, just amount, just <laughs> he what might, he does for he everybody might else. He be okay. He might be okay. I know. <laughs> That's what it was. That was but you made up to the McDonald's up in Kitchener. And I was like, oh, all right, bring him out. And then, you know, just to see him evolve from a young young boy in junior and then evolve to, to the player he was in senior and then to win with him in 09. And now he was learning from some of the greats and TK and, and Shooter and, and Caleb to be in the great on our team to teach all those young guys what it took like took to win and but that, but isn't that lacrosse for us for everyone that loves the game is to see that evolution of those young guys progress and to be able to win it's what it's what championship stories are, are written about it's like a, it's a dream come true for for me to see that and to become the family man that Dane Doby is to his to his wife and to his daughter and just the sacrifices that he makes off the field and to be able to do what he does on the field and, and you seeing him like give all that to tell Christian this is for you man it's this is not for me. And it's unreal, man. It's unreal. I just love the guy so much. He's like a little brother to me, man. And it's, it's so it's so good. So good to see a guy like that get rewarded for something that he believes so strongly in. 
And uh, you couldn't have a better leader and a better person. And I feel fortunate to be attached at the hip to Dane. And uh, we get to walk together forever now, you know, being in a, in a different light of the NLL, winning the championship together as a player and as a coach. Not many guys get a chance to do that. So I'm great. I'm grateful for Dane Doby, and I know the rest of the guys are grateful for Dane Doby because uh, you want you want your Warriors to have their hearts in their sleeves, man, and that guy's got the biggest heart, biggest heart in the game. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, Kurt. Uh, sounds like Dane Doby is going to turn out to be an okay coach as well, and I'm sure he's oh. taking a few pages out of your book uh, in that regard. Kurt, uh, that was just fantastic stuff. Thanks so much, and uh, congratulations on an LL championship. Much uh, well-deserved and couldn't be happier for you. Jake, thanks so much, and I appreciate you giving me the forum to talk about the guys like that, man. It means a lot to me, and thanks for the show, guys. You do a heck of a job. Keep promoting it. Always a pleasure, Kurt. Uh, go enjoy your championship, man. That was Kurt Malowski as the head coach of the Calgary Roughnecks, Evan. And, and to give you an idea on, on how much Kurt loves lacrosse, Rob Williams loves la- I was doing the Senior A Berards game Sunday night uh, in Maple Ridge, which is, you know, 24 hours after Calgary had won the championship. There's Rob Williams uh, on the Berards bench in his usual head coaching position. And there's Kurt Malowski with a, with a clipboard and a notepad in the stands, taking down stats. I know he's going off to coach a midget game here on a Monday night, so uh, the guy just wins an NLL championship. He's right back in a rink the next night. Uh, pretty incredible story, those Calgary Roughnecks, who, who I said, Evan, going into those playoffs were the hottest team in the NLL, and uh, Jesse King undefeated in 2019. Calgary Roughnecks are your champs. Yeah, and Kurt's one of those coaches I really appreciate for a whole different reason, and that is, as a fan you get to know exactly what he's thinking. If you watch, if you listen, if he... He's the best interview in lacrosse. Game, he's the best yeah, interview he in lacrosse. Is. He absolutely is. And, you know, he's going to tell you exactly what's on his mind, good or bad. And even the post-game interviews are a treat. And that's really what I appreciate about him is he doesn't hold back. And, you know, it's, it's a gem. Yeah, and, and as far as words per minute go, like you, you're not going to beat that either. The man can talk quick now uh evan we got to get to break we got uh the mvp on the other side it's number 44 in your roughneck program it is dane doby here on extreme threads lacrosse classified next on the lax all-stars podcast network Serving the business and sports community since 2018, Extreme Threads provides custom design apparels around the world. Specializing in lacrosse, they deliver exceptional quality and service, customizing box and field team apparel and uniforms. Extreme Threads offers free design work and takes the time to ensure you get exactly what you need for your team or club. Contact Extreme Threads at sales at extremethreads.ca for your custom apparel needs today. Hey, this is Mitch Jones of the Vancouver Warriors. You're listening to the Cross Classified on Lax All Stars. Growing the game one podcast at a time. Welcome back to Lacrosse Classified, Extreme Threads, Lacrosse Classified. You heard it right there, our title sponsor. You can find them at extremethreads.ca. Customize your team with Extreme. Uh, these guys are doing some pretty hardcore business right now. They are spread themselves out into Alberta, up in the Okanagan, here in BC, of course. Uh, all the teams using Extreme Threads to do up their uniforms. These guys are starting to get into the workplace now, though. They're doing apparel for different types of businesses, you name it. They can do it for you. Just customize your team with Extreme Sales at ExtremeThreads.ca is where you can find them. Uh, give them a shout, mention my name, and you'll get some free stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, joining the podcast now is the MVP of the NLL Cup. He's going to be the MVP of the National Lacrosse League's regular season as well. Dane Doby making his return to the program. Dane, um, I imagine still feeling pretty good here on a Tuesday after winning a championship on a Saturday. Yeah, I feel great. Uh, it's something you're, you're riding the high right now, and uh, you know it was just it was just awesome feeling. You put a lot of work in, and the guys put a lot of work in this year, and I'm uh, super excited and will be for a long time that uh, the outcome that we got. Take us through, we asked the, your coach actually the same question, but take us through those last few minutes because you get uh, an unbelievable pass from Christian, make it down, you know, you get that game 
uh, goal, you get that goal, take the lead. All of a sudden, there's back to a tie game, and then you hit that post with Vince leading the wrong way at the end of regulation. Take us through your thought process through that last minute regulation and then going into overtime. Yeah, I knew Christian. I mentioned at the halftime to let Christian know to take a quick glance for me off the bench coming in uh, in the second and fourth quarters there. And um, I thought I thought I had a good step on him. And um, I, th- I think it was O'Connor that came off the bench. He was pretty fast. He caught me pretty easily. But um, Christian put it right on a dime like he always does. Uh, we'd expect nothing less. And what a pass, Dave. On. Like, what a pass. Yeah, that's, that's what he does. He, he does it every practice, every game. So, um, it's just something that he has in his, in his bag and he'll always will. And he takes pride in that. And he loves, he loves the part of the game where he can hurry it up and move the ball up the floor as quick as he can. So I, I just got, I was in on tight and I didn't have much time to think. I just tried to put a short side. So luckily enough, that went in and we had a heartbreaker there that they, they scored right away. And, um, you know, it's a couple things. They scored, they got a loose, nice loose ball there and, off the faceoff, bang the timeout. We stopped the first possession, and then uh, um, they got a nice. Uh, Corey Small got a nice look, and far side high is his go-to, and put it in a pretty good corner there. So <laughs> yeah, I <he> did. <laughs> then, <laughs> and then, then it goes to the six on five. Is we had a drop play drawn up, and it kind of got all scrambly, and I just thought I'd take it to the net and kind of threw a little twister at Vino, and felt like the, you know, I just I knew it hit the post right away too, and I was just you know, devastated at first and you got a couple of seconds to think about it. Then you got to regroup and move on. And fortunately enough, we, we did. Speaking with Dane Doby, uh, there's so many things I want to ask you here, Dane, but you, you win in 09, I believe in your rookie year and you had a couple of looks at it, but you win again here in, in 10 years later, 11 years later, uh, Kurt Malowski was your teammate back in 09. Now is your head coach. Just, I want you to, I don't know if you can, but if you can, try and compare the two, what it, what the feelings were like back in 09 when you won as a youngster compared to what you won now uh, as a veteran on, in the league. Comparison-wise, like 09, I was mostly all ears and just take it, taking it uh, day by day. You know, I, that's all I had in my life was the cross. And, uh, you know, I had a girlfriend, which is my wife now, but um, I just, I was all ears. I just loved being with the boys and, you know, any time I could, I'd be hanging out and trying to trying to take as much in as, as, as we could from from those guys. And I can name five or six of them, and I'll probably miss out. But you got Caleb Toll, Tracy Klosky, Josh Sanderson, Mouse. All those guys taught me the ropes. They're all professionals. They taught me the ins and outs of the NLL. And um, I think that benefited to who, as a player as I am now um, from what I learned from those guys. And I'm so grateful. I, I text all those guys after within the last couple of days and pretty much thanking them of teaching me how how to be a professional in this league and how to how to carry yourself. So this one it was, it was very special as well. We had some young kids and we had to battle. We battled hard. We went through a lot of adversity this year and um, what coming out on the end of it is just, you know, you, you peak at the right time and I like to say everybody was playing great but Jesse King 7-0 and as a, as a Calgary Roughneck doesn't help and or helps a lot. Sorry, he doesn't hurt. He's a uh, he's an amazing piece of the pie, and I don't think people realize how good of an asset he could possibly well, be. Well, I wanted to ask you about Jesse King, Dane, and you'll you'll lead me right into the question. Like Calgary, to me, became a much more dangerous team, a much more dynamic offensive team once Jesse King came into the lineup, and it was challenging. I mean, maybe not so for you because you had one of your best years ever, if not your best, but. It became a different looking offense when Jesse King came in, and and he's one of those guys that kind of makes everybody around him better. Do you think he made you better? And if so, how? Hundred percent. A better player. He made me realize what he's all about, and uh, I can't say enough about him. To be honest, I think I was talking to Bob McMahon after the game. I said Jesse King's a guy from the nineteen eighties. He'd go out there and he'd absolutely do everything he possibly could, and. He's so good at everything. That, like, and you don't—they don't. Lacrosse players aren't made like that anymore. You know, he could play without the ball for sixty minutes, and he could—he could play with the ball for the whole game. He—he he gets loose balls. He could play defense. He can really do it all. And there's not many players in the lacrosse league anymore, or the lacrosse world anymore, that can actually physically do that. And I can't say enough about the guy. Um, he came in, and he just 
found his role right away. Um, I didn't, he just played off, off ball a lot. And when he had the ball, he was successful. So, um, the guy was phenomenal. He's a great, great kid. Um, I, I'm excited. Hopefully I get to play with him more. And, um, we're just, I, I can't say enough, like I said before, and uh, I'm grateful that he was a piece of it. And I'm grateful for management for bringing him in. And I know it was a big trade with Katoni and Katoni's a, a great goal scorer in the NLL and he will be like that for a long time. But Jesse King, let me tell you, he's, uh, he's got it all. He's got it. He really does. When you get announced as the MVP of the playoffs, um, you're clearly emotional, but you refuse to talk about yourself. You start pointing at Christian Del Bianco and telling him to come over. Take us through that moment, and I guess what Christian means to you and to the team. Yeah, I think I blacked out, really. Um, I I thought Christian was the MVP. He's been our backbone forever um, since the start of this year, let's say. And we go off of him. He's had goal, He's had games where, you know, even in the playoffs, I think his save percentage is, his goals against average before last game was like seven something. And that's like a summer ball game in an old four by four net. So the kid could play. Um, he's got, I, I, I like to say he's cold blooded. Like it's nothing affects him. Like it, it, it's unbelievable. He can get scored on like that, that goal course, small guts. He's got scored on. He just picked the ball out. And gave it's, cra- it's crazy. It's crazy. It's no, crazy. How? No, yeah. yeah. I don't no big like- deal. He doesn't, he doesn't unravel. He just, he just goes with the wind and, you know, he just loves the game so much that I, I have a lot in common with Christian. Um, there's a 10 to 12 year, whatever it is, gap between ages. But that guy, man, I tell you, how much he actually physically loves the game and how much he puts towards the game and gives back towards the game. At this young of age, there's something special there, and he's going to be something for a long time. Yeah, he sure is. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem walking out on a – a pretty thick limb to say that he's he's got the potential to be the greatest ever. Uh, Dane Doby, I want to ask you one more. I asked your coach this, and and watching that halftime segment with Devin, with you and and, and Kurt, uh, it it got it got me emotional. I'm sure you had some emotions running through you as well. Uh, you guys have been locked at the hip since your days in junior, and he kind of told the story about Lincoln's dad saying, hey, I, I got this kid from Aurora that might be okay. You want to take a look at him, and, and the rest was history sort of thing. But you've grown up under Kurt Malowski, Dane, literally from you know a kid in junior to a family man now with kids yourself. Uh, it wasn't always easy with Kurt, I'm sure, and, and we all know how fiery Kurt could be, and, and it still is, and especially on the junior bench. But... Uh, for for a career you two that has you know been parallel the entire way, just talk about your your head coach and your friend Kurt Malowski. Yeah, like that's been coming up lately, and um, I don't think many people knew how long we've physically been together. And um, there's a lot of reflecting I could possibly do with Mouse, and uh, I mean, so many things away from the game of lacrosse. It's like unbelievable. Um, He's like he is like an older brother, a father figure to me when I was when I was younger and when I was going through through tough times as, as a <laughs> immature kid. Um, I had no family out west. He was he was the guy. He was the guy I looked up to. He was the guy that was going to be strict to tell me how it was. And um, most I could give a lot of a lot of credit to the lacrosse player I am today because of Kurt Malosky. and I can really honestly tell you that because. He's taught me so much about what it takes to compete and like how much you actually physically have to put in if you want to be successful. And it, I learned a lot of that stuff from him. He's the best X and O guys. Everybody knows he's the best X and O's coach in in the NLL or in any in any kind of aspect of lacrosse. He understands the game better than anybody I've ever ever talked to about it. And if you just want to sit down and have, talk lacrosse. You just give him a call because he'll talk to you for 45 minutes straight <laughs> about what he thinks and all his lacrosse stuff. But I can't say enough about the guy. We're gonna be we're gonna be great friends for a long time. Um, I, I hang out with his kids. He's got two two sons that play lacrosse, and you know whenever I can throw the ball around with them, I I, I will. And he's been fantastic with my wife and my daughter. So um, I hope our hopefully he can still coach me. <laughs> but and I know I guarantee our friendship goes way beyond lacrosse, and uh, I'm very grateful that he brought me out here and gave me an opportunity to play in junior lacrosse out here. 
Well, Dean, uh, I'm sure we're going to have you back on because you're the head coach of the Langley Junior Thunder. I don't know what was going on with that loss to Nanaimo uh, the other day. I don't want to see anything like that happen again, but uh, you got your guys off to a good start. Uh, Mental Cup's in your backyard, so I'm sure we're going to be talking to you a little later on in the summer, but I really appreciate you doing this. Congratulations on uh, another NLL championship and an MVP to go along with it. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, man. That was Dean Doby, MVP of the NLL Cup. He's going to be the MVP of the regular season as well. What a season for the veteran Dean Doby, Evan. Yeah, uh, and like we had talked about earlier, he didn't have a lot of his supporting cast there at the start of the year. You know, Dixon was on a contract holdout. Berg, you know, had missed you know missed the entire season. Jesse King's gone for most of the year. And they have this constant just roster of guys in and out. So that, on top of the fact that he had the overall points lead, it wasn't just that. It was what he had to overcome the entire year yeah. with a constantly changing roster to actually achieve that scoring record. Well, that's that. That's what made it as impressive as it was. Never mind what he, like you said, what he did statistically. It's what he did under the circumstances that he was under. And really, that's the definition of MVP. Uh, we got to wrap this podcast up on the other side, Evan. Uh, might might get a little emotional between me and you here uh, when we return to the fourth quarter of Extreme Threads Lacrosse Classified. We will wrap it up next here on the Lacrosse All-Stars Podcast Network. Associated Labels and Packaging is in the business of creating first impressions. They'll help you reflect your company values accurately by offering solutions that fit your product needs. With the latest in printing technology and over 35 years of experience, Associated Labels and Packaging is the perfect fit for your company to take your labels and packaging to the next level. Hey, this is the captain of the Calgary Roughnecks, Dan McCray, and you're listening to Lacrosse Classified on Lax All-Stars. Growing the game, one podcast at a time. Welcome back to Lacrosse Classified. Lax Class is where you can find us via Twitter. Um, you just heard it right there. Associated Labels and Packaging, one of our fabulous sponsors here on Lax Class. Sean Ashworth and the gang down there in Coquitlam creating first impressions. Find them. Online, associated-labels.com. Have anything that needs a label or you need anything that requires a package? Those are your people. Find them at Associated LP, as in labels and packaging, via their social media as well. Get in touch. Jake Elliott, Evan Shemin are back with you for one final quarter here on the Cross Classified. And uh, Evan... It'll be our final quarter for quite some time. We're going to talk about that in uh, a few minutes here. But let's uh, let's get the fans updated on kind of BC Summer Lacrosse. Uh, I know you're connected out there with your SWAT in the Rocky Mountain League, but it's not the SWAT making noise uh, so far in the Junior A season. A little bit of a shakeup back there in Alberta where the two Edmonton teams, the Miners and the Eclipse, uh, combine teams, and it looks like it's been the right move here because they're off to a pretty good start. Yeah, Edmonton Blues, the team that uh, combined with them there, but um, no, like a 3-1 and one start for the Miners is an absolutely stunning thing. Now, of course, not only combine the two teams, but there are a lot of players in Edmonton who off to play Junior B just because they were getting beat up in junior A. So they've had one heck of an effort. And you think about it right now, the two Calgary teams uh, that have dominated that Rocky Mountain League for years are sitting third and fourth right now, which is just astounding. Yeah, that's that's a big surprise. We'll see if that continues. But um, that's, I mean, I, I wasn't particularly happy about two teams joining and one folding to, to do that, but... If it's going to make the league stronger, I think you got to look at the big picture there a little bit. Uh, in Alberta, back here in BC, uh, Adnex took a while to get their schedule going, but uh, rolling nicely now are the purple and gold. 8-0 sitting at the top of the standing. Shamrocks have played 10 games. They are 6-4. and four. That puts them in second. Timberman... I uh, just mentioned at the end there with the Dane Doby interview, beat the Langley Thunder. The Timbermen are for real, ladies and gentlemen. Six and one. 
through seven games. Langley sitting in fourth at six and three, and the Sand Belly starting to pick it up at uh, four and three. In the BC Junior A standings, the WLA has got going. I know a majority of our listeners, Evan, uh, are NLL fans. They're box lacrosse fans. But for fans that may not know, when your NLL stars are not playing in the National Lacrosse League, they're usually either playing in the Western Lacrosse Association or the Major Series League in either BC or Ontario. And good news here for lacrosse fans across uh, North America here, Evan, both leagues For the first time in quite some time, the WLA has been webcasting every game for a long time, and they continue to do that. You can find every single WLA game webcast at PlayFullScreen.com. PlayFullScreen, uh, if you want to sign up for that. But the Major Series League has signed a webcasting deal with Lacrosse TV, my good friends at Lacrosse TV. And they will be webcasting every single game. They've been kind of like spotty on which teams they did and when it was happening. And they, But now they've committed to doing the entire regular season. This is fantastic. Go to lacrosse-tv.com if you want to watch some MSL games. Uh, sp- well, I wish they tuned in uh, last night there with Peter Pearl missing well, a third of his lineup. Yeah, <laughs> it was just because of the NLL final. Well, I don't. What was what did it end up being the score there? Do you know? Well, it was just a thing of you know the guys are beat up from playing in Calgary and no, no, no. Off. But I, I, I know why they did, weren't playing. But what did you find out? What the score was between Peterborough? What they, they were playing Brampton, weren't they? Yeah, I don't have the score on that one. No. Okay. Um, so Maple Ridge beat Coquitlam on Sunday night. Burnaby beat Coquitlam on Saturday night. Uh, Langley with a road win over Victoria. The Bellies beat Nanaimo on the road as well. Uh, the Bellies also beat the Thunder at home. So the season well underway here in the WLA. Uh, early stages. Brampton, I, do we still call them the Excelsiors? I don't, if you haven't seen this yet, uh, Evan, and I know you have, but I'm talking to the fans out there. I, you, you were on the side of this being okay. I, I am on the side of... There's got to be a better way than to just torch over a hundred years of tradition in a synonymous jersey as far as lacrosse goes. If you haven't seen yet this yet, a company by the name of Bug Juice has taken over the title sponsor of the Brampton Excelsiors and gone away with the crimson and gold, the maroon and gold, whatever you want to call it, uh, the crooked E, and replaced their logo with... Their company logo, Bug Juice, on the front and the back. Like these are, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm just, they're hideous, Evan. Absolutely hideous jerseys. Well, and I, I mean, you're saying if they're putting up the bill and they want to put their logo on a jersey, they can do whatever they want. I'm just saying, Brampton, nobody is holding a gun to their head, and we're forced to take this money to see. The tradition of the Brampton, except this, which is the equivalent to like the Montreal Canadiens in hockey, Evan, to see them just go away with that jersey and slap bug juice on it for whatever the paycheck was doesn't sit right with me. I just think there had to been a better way, and if you're gonna do it, at least put in an effort and make a half decent jersey. Okay, I mean, maybe the jersey doesn't look the greatest, but here's the way I look at doesn't it, and, and I know greatest. I'm in the minority on this one. That's fine. First off, if you're the owner of the team and you need revenue, like these MSL teams do not pay the bills with the gate that they get on a daily basis. If I'm in the shoes of that owner and a company comes up to me and says, I will give you this much, and it had to have been quite a bit of cash for this to happen, to be your title sponsor and I want your, my logo on your jersey. I'm okay with that because they need the you know they need the revenue to support the team, and I've you know I've seen European hockey before. You see the the logos plastered all over yeah. the jersey. I mean, the even the Peterborough the Lakers are a walking billboard. Right, but I just and, uh... and I got no problem with it because I look at it this way. I went to a Swedish elite hockey game. This was back when the lockout was happening, and a lot of good players there. But I got my ticket for the equivalency of 15 U.S. dollars because they have all this sponsorship all over the place. And I'm okay with that. You know, and like I said, 
if there were more bug juices out there that would be willing to invest that kind of money into lacrosse and to get better player development and help teams pay bills so they can stick around, I'm good with it. I'm sorry, but that's the way I look at yeah, it. Yeah, again, I, I think it's great that Bug Juice has come on board and has laid down a bunch of cash to the owner of the Brampton Bug Juice Excelsiors. I don't even know what to call them anymore, Evan, but I'm just saying if you're going to do it and you're going to take that money, you got to keep your history in mind and come to some sort of compromise where you're you're getting a big patch somewhere or something, but to just completely discard 100 years of tradition for a paycheck, I... I don't know. I, I'm I'm not in that position, so it's hard to say. But I I I, I dislike it quite a bit, uh, as you can probably tell. Anyways, let's well, move on. It, I it, get it. I get it. It's money. Yeah, but you think about it, if you look up the Peterborough Lakers on yeah. Twitter, are you going to find them? No, but they're, they're that tradition. Lakers. Yeah, I don't know. I I get it. I get it. But I I don't like it. I don't like it, Evan. Um, speaking of other things that I don't like, uh, this will be our final show together for quite some time. If people haven't heard yet, my former partner, uh, Brad Schaliner, the voice color analyst of the Vancouver Warriors, will be rejoining the podcast. He's out here in British Columbia with me, and we'll be calling some games at the World Championships, uh, be doing some WI lacrosse as well. We're going to try and uh, mix in a little Eastern correspondence as well on a regular basis. Evan will be checking back in from time to time uh, for expansion draft, uh, any NLL news that breaks. uh, Evan will be back on for that, but our focus will shift towards the summer game in in both the East and the West, and uh, we'll check in with Calgary and Saskatchewan as we move along as well. And uh, I'm thinking we might focus our attention a little bit on the PLL as well, if we can get some access to that and uh, check in with a couple of PLL stars throughout the summer as well. With all that being said, Evan, uh, 29 episodes, man, and and, uh, to think about when I think about it, where you came from when you did episode one, and I think if you go back and listen to yourself back in episode one to where you are now here in episode 29, you've grown quite a bit um, as, a, as a broadcaster slash podcaster here, and uh, it's been a lot of fun, man, and um, I'm going to miss you for a bit, but you'll be back. Well, I mean, thank you so much for bringing me on. Um, you know, it was something you didn't have to do, but you wanted me there, and to me, to this day, I'm still much more comfortable behind a keyboard, not on a podcast. And I, I guess part of it is with a keyboard, I can take my time. I can correct things. I can make sure things are right. I can double check stats. Here, I got to be on the go and I got to be <laughs> there. And sometimes I sit there and mumble my words because it's like, I'm trying to get this point across and how do I get that across? Right. But I mean, you are the ultimate host here and you literally can help guide me through this and i mean you've been absolutely fantastic well uh i appreciate that evan and and like i said uh don't don't sell yourself short you've come a long way in that regard and and you're right it's a completely different animal and like anything in life the more you do it the better you get at it and uh we'll look forward to doing it some more coming up um you you made i mean you should be pretty happy with the fact that you made me dress up uh like a cowboy here this year yeah but i mean i'm getting a nice uh twitter profile picture for a week so it's all good right yeah, absolutely absolutely okay evan uh for the final time for us uh, a big thanks to our guests this week in kurt malowski and dane doby uh, our fabulous sponsors, of course, in Stampede Tack, Pure Vital Labs, Associated Labels and Packaging, Extreme Threads. To you, the listener, that have tuned in all National Lacrosse League season long, even before when we were going through that nasty labor dispute, which seems so long ago, but also seems like it was right there just a couple of weeks ago. Um, Appreciate the NLL support all season long. Hope you stick around for the summer with myself and Brad Challoner as Lacrosse Classified will roll along all year long here on the Lacrosse All Stars Podcast Network. Uh, don't forget to follow us along on social media at Shemlax is where you can find Evan. Me, I am at PXP, the number four 
Sports, the show is at Lax Class. You can subscribe to the podcast on all your regular channels. Wherever you find your podcast, you will find Lacrosse Classified via the Lacrosse All Stars podcast network subscribe and it gets delivered right to your phone it's pretty cool technology i suggest you use it all right that will do it for the fastest game on two feet and for the creator we'll talk to you next time here on extreme threads lacrosse classified on the lax all-stars podcast network